start off with introductions. My name is Justin Cameron. I'm the principal of Concord Middle School. I had a chance to Zoom with many of you in early March um, as a chance to learn a little bit about the transition to the middle school years. Um, I have two little ones who are upstairs finishing up dinner um, and are getting ready to start their nighttime routines. My youngest is in kindergarten. My oldest is in second grade. I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Brand. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> hi everybody, I'm Laura Brand. Um, I am the um, special education coordinator and administrator for special education at the middle school. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here. I'm looking forward to um, speaking to you a little bit more later in the evening about special education. I guess we'll go to Ms. Bradford since Mr. Steffi has a visitor. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Olive Bradford. I'm one of two assistant principals at Concord Middle School and spend most of my days in the Peabody building. So I will get to know all of your future sixth graders very well. Um, I have a, an almost four year old and have really enjoyed my three years here in Concord. Um, good, evening, good evening, everybody. My name is Tyler. I am the other assistant principal and I am at the Sanborn building. I'm finishing up my fourth year there, I've got a, a wonderful six and eight year old um, who go to school here in Sudbury. And uh, I was just saying to the group, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this night as a school administrator and as, a, and as a dad thinking about how we can ensure that we have an absolutely wonderful transition for your kiddos uh, from fifth to sixth grade. Mr. Steffi, you have a pencil growing out of your head. According yes, to I, do. I do. I do. I <laughs> do. All right, here's our agenda for the evening. And again, if your fifth grader is not around, um, do your best to summons him, her, them to our first half of our program, which should last about 30 minutes or so. So we are first gonna review our student council Pancakes with the Panther program. It's triple P, that's alliteration. Pancakes with the Panther program that happened uh, the week of May 23rd at our sixth grade building when we welcomed our Boston and Concord fifth graders from Elcott, Thoreau and Willard. We're gonna talk a little bit about important summer dates that are upcoming. I'm gonna share our rising sixth grade new to Concord Google site that is still under construction. Then we have about a 17 minute video, if you can believe it or not, that were produced um, not only by our current students, but some of our former students as well. Then we're going to dismiss our fifth grade students at about the seven o'clock hour and talk just to the parents and guardians about the adolescent brain. We'll talk a little bit about some author visits that we have had in the last year or so. We're gonna do a quick CMS history lesson. We're gonna talk about teaming at CMS, the new CMS building, and then we're gonna hear from our CMS PTG. I just wanna remind everyone who might be interested in the special education presentation at the middle school that is happening around the 7.30 hour on this Zoom. Okay. Mr. Cameron, would you like to um, direct anyone uh, as to how to ask questions? Uh, sure, but yeah. Um, so I guess we can offer up an opportunity to ask questions in the chat or the Q&A. Um, during the time right before we transition the students um, away from their computer screens. Okay, uh, to review, a Pancake with the Panther program happened on May 23rd when we welcomed our Boston and Concord fifth graders from across the district, Elcott, Thoreau, and Willard. Here you see some pictures of our Panther cooking up some pancakes for our fifth graders and in the middle here, you see some picnic tables that were donated a quick shout out to the Concord Ed Fund uh, for their support of our outdoor eating at Concord Middle School. And to the right here, you see a sixth grade student council panel that answered questions for all of our fifth grade visitors who came in again the week of um, May 23rd. Ms. Bradford, what were some highlights uh, that you can recall from this week a couple of weeks ago. Well, at one of the at one of the elementary school visits, the the Panther had an opportunity to to play some basketball with some of the fifth graders. That was that was pretty exciting. 
Um, and then just a, a wide variety of questions asked by students about schedule and food in the cafeteria and extracurricular activities. And I think there's no better group to hear it from than our current sixth graders. Here you see a fifth grade hand high up in the air asking questions. Um, the first, the first like five or seven minutes of the video that is going to be shown in about 10 minutes or so is all about how to read our sixth grade or our middle school schedule, which actually was a big part, a big theme of the questions that were asked uh, during this week. Um, and I did plug the video and this evening with all of our fifth graders when they came to visit. Okay, here are some important dates that are happening this summer. Um, on July 22nd is when all parents and guardians, actually six through eight, will be receiving um, an email inviting all of our families to sign into their Aspen accounts to see a PDF of their child's schedule. Shortly thereafter, and we'll share an exact date and time, um, we are actually on a Zoom called CMS Help Desk that we um, started in the days of the pandemic and we have kept going in times of support for our families and students. So we will have a Zoom help desk about schedules that will open um, and I think they're appointment based and the way that looks is you sign up for about a 10 minute slot and it would just be you, myself and Miss Bradford probably um, who will have 10 minutes to talk about any questions or um, concerns or areas of support you might need for your child's schedule. In terms of how to read the schedule, um, that's what tonight is all about. And that is what our um, Google site that will be opening in the next few weeks is all about as well. And then finally in August, there will be some family self-guided tours where we just uh, allow our families to sign up for a time slot um, that is meant to be a low anxiety opportunity for a family to walk the sixth grade building with their with a schedule in hand and get a sense and um, a real orientation of the building. And then we're going to have tours that you can sign up for led by what are called our Panther Ambassadors. Uh, we have a new student Panther Ambassador Club, after school club, and we have Panther Ambassadors who are being trained and giving tours. And then finally, um, there is going to be a huge movement um, in getting our students back in the habit of using their lockers. Um, lockers have been available for our sixth graders since October 1st of this past school year. Um, they were not available during the year of the pandemic in 2021. But I'll be honest, sixth graders for some reason really didn't get in the habit. We're talking about our current sixth graders. So we're gonna do everything we can to really uh, promote the use of lockers. And we're gonna have a return of our locker move-in days. More information about that is gonna be coming out in the summer months. Here is the rising sixth grade new to Concord Google site that will be published um, in the next couple of weeks. So we have our website, which is something like Concord.org. Um, and then we have our rising sixth grade new to Concord Google sites. This is in support of all our Boston and Concord families that may be in Concord public schools and making that transition from the elementary to middle school. But it, it, this site, it will also be in support of all of our new to Boston and new to Concord families. Um, when I say new to Boston, I mean new to the MECO program. So this site should be dropping in the next couple of weeks, um, including of which will be the um, supply list for all grades as well. Okay, here's where we get to the video. So sit back, grab some popcorn, some candy, uh, maybe some snow caps. That's my favorite candy. Ms. Bradford, what's your favorite candy? I think M&Ms. M&Ms, okay, we'll do it. Ms. Brand? Um, anything with peanut butter. Peanut butter and chocolate. Peanut butter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Steffi, what are you going to uh, grab for the movie here? For me, the movie is uh, Popcorn and Twizzlers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Love it. Ever try the combination of popcorn and snow caps? No, but I love the sound of it. Yeah. Delicious. 
Okay. Whiskey and savory works for me. <laughs> Enjoy. So this is how the schedule works at Concord Middle School. The way you read a sixth grade schedule is you look at the top block where it says A, B, C, D, E, F. And there's six letters in the cycle. You start with A and then you go throughout. But then the next week you'll start with F. So you keep rotating and when the week ends you just start where you left off. And you'll see where your classes are, so where it says period one. That's where you'll have, um, that's your first period, then second, then third, and you just go through the rotation like that. Our schedules have a six letter cycle. And say on A day you'll have gym class, but on B day you won't have gym class. And it's just like a way to organize um, which classes you have each day. But you can think of it as a waterfall. So as if you have it social studies first period, um, on A day, then you'll have it second period on B day, and you'll have it third period on C day. The bell schedule is something how we go by our day, so we know when period one ends and period two starts. But each team has a different bell schedule. In the beginning, we all start with the same bells, but then once Forrest or whatever um, team has the first lunch goes to lunch, then it's all different. So you have to know when your bell is, and you have um, a four minute walking period to get to each class. Don't be worried, that's more than enough time to get to your class. Um, so fundamentals is a class that you only have first trimester, um, which there's three trimesters. And it's basically a class to help you learn how to use your planner, how to send a proper email to your teachers, and how to manage your homework. You learn about how to use your laptop and like what you should and shouldn't do on it. Student council is where you can discuss certain topics like having a spirit week or a change in the school. Like maybe start fundraisers to get money for certain activities that we want to do in the school, like socials and but you can really discuss multiple topics and it's generally a fun place to be. We have a suggestion box that you put in suggestions at the library. We bring them to student council to talk about them and see if we can make it a part of the school. Student council is very fun. If you and some friends join, you can together change things about the school. You can help the school evolve and to become a better place but also you can socialize with people that are above your grade and below your grade if you're in seventh and eighth grade. Being a sixth grader in student council, I find it is something enjoyable and I wait for Thursdays every week. Home base is the first bell ringed and everyone's in school. They read um, the announcements with their teacher and then they do the Pledge of Allegiance and after that, whatever the teacher decides. Like some home bases, they join with other home bases to watch movies, some just watch videos. Uh, also, for something that's fun in home base, Molly the dog comes to some home bases and you sign up to get to meet her. Home base is a great way to make friends and- I didn't know uh, one of my current friends until he and I had met in home base. Home base is our school's advisory program. Um, every morning the bell rings and you go to a room and there's like about like 10 people and you hang around for 10 minutes basically. It's fun. Every like two weeks on um, Thursday, we'll have a extended home base, which involves like some larger activity. Sometimes you can just do whatever you want, but then other times we talk about things bullying or um, I think we talked about like social media ones. About how to make CMS a better place because there's always room for improvement. We sometimes play a game where we like we do tag but it's like we don't run with speed walk tag. Teachers will like play music sometimes they bring in food which is the best. I've gotten really close with everyone in my home base because they're all really sweet. Home base is great. You get to hang around with friends and just relax. Maybe like plan out your day. Home base provides a safe environment in which students build community and establish connections. Base stands for bully proofing challenges, academic advising, social emotional development, education, entertainment, and fun. I think. Uh being in middle school is different from elementary school because you have a lot more freedom and you can like go to classes yourself you don't have to like have a teacher walk you to your classes being a student at concord middle school is super fun because it's always changing 
and you always are with different people. So it's not like the same people every class. I think Concord Middle School is a great place to learn, hang out with friends, and overall better yourself. I think that the general feeling about Concord Middle School is community. Everyone is very supportive. And everyone is accepting of each other. And that's what I really like, is that I don't feel embarrassed to be who I am. The teachers here are all amazing. They're really friendly, supportive all three grades. They really help you feel and like let you know that you count and that you matter. I love my teachers. They're amazing and they always want to help me. And what I really like is that the teachers will always take time to explain something. They make sure that you understand what's going on and you aren't lost or anything. They really care about the students, like I'm in eighth grade um, with Miss Callahan here at Peabody, and she offers like multiple days a week. She'll say like, oh, here's extra help, and she'll let you know. It's not just like you have to ask her. She'll offer it to anyone. They want you to do the best that you possibly can. Do activities. They take us outside sometimes. They incorporate games, and the teachers are really invested in the after-school activities. This school has probably the best after-school opportunities I've ever seen because there's like so many you get to be with your friends there's like a thousand different after school clubs that you can do and it's a really great way again to get to know people that you wouldn't know and it's just super fun to be able to connect with people and talk with people who have the same interests as you CMS offers all different kinds of sports like in the fall they offer cross country soccer and field hockey in the winter they offer girls and boys basketball. In the spring, we offer interscholastic baseball, softball, and track. Interscholastic means that you would compete against other schools. Sports here at CMS are just so fun. The coaches are so nice, and so are the other people on your team. So here you can go to our website and learn more about all the really fun sports that we offer here at CMS. The clubs here at CMS are really, really cool. There's Rise Club, Chef's Club, there's Animal Supplements Club, Media's Club, GSA, Lego Robotics, Honors Quiet, Marvel Club, Math Team, Divide and Conquer, Art Club, Women in Leadership, Intramural Sports, Makerspace Club, Doodle Club, Yearbook, Ultimate Frisbee. This is a great way to learn and um, meet new people. Go to our website right here to join any of the clubs. All you have to do is email the faculty advisor member that is a part of the club. The challenge me and other students went to um, I think Bedford, and we did some challenges involving math and ELA and justice. It was a lot of fun. We got first in math and first overall. Child Success is a program which tries to build a better community and a balance in school and work with children around the world. It helps kids realize and what they're doing and how the community can bring those people together. Well, the conference was with these counselors that helped us um, bring in more ideas that we could bring into the school. Uh, they talked about some main points like how stressful it is in school for these children. How can we help them? Also, like what can we do to make a difference in how these kids will learn and how to make it a less stressful experience. One of the coolest things that happens um, is probably uh, the musical. And I made some amazing friends in the play that I probably wouldn't have known or become friends with outside of the play. The sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders don't interact all that much. But when you're in the musical, there's always some sixth graders and always some eighth graders and always some seventh graders. Well, it is partly the camaraderie with people, but also like, just the experience of being on stage in front of like a bunch of people. But like once you're in the moment, it sort of melts away and you become your character. You're all creating something together. Each year I meet like new people that like I'll get to know throughout the process of making the performance. And now like in the high school, I'll, I'll get to know them even more. So that's great. <laughs> school advisory committee. Um, it's a group of parents, staff, and students who are working to better improve the school and make it a better place for everybody. We worked on a challenge success program for our school, create more of a balance between um, for students between work and play, and how do we think of creative and more engaging ways to uh, learn at school. 
The student council is a group of students um, who work to improve the school and give students more of a voice. Last year we made a new handbook for students and this year we're looking to make a parent and teacher handbook and a student handbook. And it just makes more students feel heard and welcomed. So you really, you get to have a say in what happens in the school. Yeah, it's a really fun experience to get to know people who work with the school. The students feel represented. So Maroon and Gold Day is something that celebrates school spirit. Um, usually people try to wear as much maroon and gold as possible and you tally it up. Um, and something new that we started this year is Maroon and Gold Bowl, which is where we all, all three grades go into the forum and we split up into home bases and we do competitions and trivia, and it's really fun. School students in Concord stepping through some important life lessons. Student leaders with the Playbook Initiative spent Thursday leading discussions about race, religion, and gender orientation. They also played out different scenarios that were written by students. It's all part of an anti-discrimination and anti-bias program run by Project 351 and the Celtics Shamrock Foundation, which was inspired by the team's 2016-17 roster but middle school students such an important time so great to do that when they're that age right yeah it's nice to see that they're making that a priority yeah yeah well there was this is the playbook initiative at concord middle school <laughs> Part of the off-court legacy left behind by the 2016-2017 Boston Celtics team, the Playbook Initiative seeks to leverage the power of sport, and more specifically, the appeal of the Celtics to engage middle schoolers on critical and plaguing societal issues. Starting in 2017 and 2018, the Playbook Initiative is an anti-discrimination and bias prevention training for middle school students and adults. The training centers on a social playbook written by middle school students that inspires a dialogue on race, religion, gender, and disability, and ultimately equips those who participate in the workshop with the tools to intervene in challenging social situations. The goal of the training is to teach those who engage in the workshop to be more aware of discrimination and how to respond when it happens. Too often teens, even adults, are either the target of teasing or are witnesses to bullying and feel unprepared in how to act. Individuals who leave the Playbook Initiative report that they feel much more equipped in responding, being an upstander, and with the understanding of telling a trusted adult when the teasing or bullying happens. Concord Middle School was one of the first schools selected to engage in the Playbook Initiative in 2018. Since 2018, over 400 Concord Middle School students, 200 adults, including support staff, bus drivers, parents, teachers, members of the community, including the Concord Police, school committee members, and Concord Public School leaders have participated in the Playbook Initiative. Since 2018, the following coaches and players have partnered with the organization called Project 351 and students and staff from the middle school. Brad Stevens, Taco Fall, Al Horford, Grant Williams, Jalen Brown, all in an effort to renew and strengthen the Concord Middle School culture, ensuring that it's grounded in equity and leveraging diversity and inclusion throughout the school. In 2022, Concord Middle School began an important tradition of using its successful advisory program, Home Base, as a platform to engage all 700 or so students and 140 or so faculty and staff. Each grade has approximately 25 home bases or advisory groups of about 10 to 12 students. Each grade also has approximately 25 playbook student leaders who will partner with the home-based adult advisor in leading the almost three-hour playbook training.
um, all incoming fifth graders land in the same spot in sixth grade. Uh, and so the big adjustment would be that our seventh and eighth graders will have to be in one of our two campuses and then all of our sixth graders will be together at the same campus at one of our two middle school buildings. And so you can imagine the life of a current fifth grader uh, and how cool it will be and how impactful it will be to travel as a cohort with their entire friend group from kindergarten to 12th grade. Many of our teachers have experience working in both buildings. Um, neither building is unfamiliar to students in the other building. Uh, and so I think that there's a, a lot of uh, infrastructure in place to address the fear of that change. And I think that that's a very positive thing. Okay. So the time is about seven o'clock um, and I am purposely not gonna open it up for questions. And the reason for that is because of our student council pancakes, Let's see if I can do this again, pancakes with the Panther program. Um, essentially three quarters of that program was our fifth graders asking our sixth graders and myself and Ms. Bradford, every question from um, how, when do we get our lockers to um, how our lunches to whether or not we give detentions to how much homework do we receive. So I do think the Q and A or the chat could get a little overwhelming if we opened it up for questions. So um, we are gonna make a transition at this time. Um, our fifth grade students are um, able to stay on the Zoom. That's really up to all of the fifth graders who are on, um, but I invite you to transition into um, your evening plans and whatever fifth grade homework you still might have to do. And we're gonna make a transition to supporting just our parents and guardians at this time for the next 20 minutes or so. So we're at this slide here um, that I think is probably one of the most, um, whenever I Google something, I'm a visual learner, um, I toggle right over to Google images. And I believe I was Googling executive functioning, um, the teenage brain, and this came up. Um, so much more can be shared or, or talked about here. Um, but I wanted an opportunity to really just put this slide in front of all our parents and guardians this evening. Um, this is one of two authors that we most recently have had uh, a chance to visit with uh, through Zoom. Um, this was Phyllis Fagel, who is the author of Middle School Matters, 10 Key Skills Kids Need to Thrive in Middle School and Beyond and How Parents Can Help. Um, this was a Google chat that we had with Phyllis, with our parents, educators, guardians, and community members. Um, if you look at some of these Twitter screen grabs, uh, question one, the author shares her mental catalog or memories of her middle school experience. Share some of your middle school memories. At least one has to be positive. Uh, Question four over here on the right top corner in chapter two, the author talks about the importance of giving this age a sense of purpose. What may be a good, what may be a good school and home example of this? Um, then question one in the lower right hand corner from chapter 14, the author shares the importance of being patient with middle school age students, boys in particular, and not always being communicative excuse me, what are some strategies that may help parents who struggle with their teen who may not be talking? Um, and then uh, we talked a lot about um, in the lower left-hand corner here, uh, the author shares this question, how can educators and parents empower students who are at risk uh, so they don't suffer in silence? So there is a professional uh, practice goal of all middle school educators uh, we land here with great intent and purpose of a focus on this age. We love this age. Um, quite frankly, too many parents and guardians share, especially when they're going back through this age, we're just going to get through it. Um, I want to really exercise um, the critical nature of this age 
In terms of brain development, there's only one other age where it is so critical, and that is when your child is born up until about age three. The other ages that matters the most in brain development and what you surround your child with are ages 11 to 14, which is exactly what middle school is all about. I'm going to play just a minute or so of Jessica Leahy's podcast. Um, Jessica Leahy, I want to say, I was going to say filmed, but I guess she recorded a podcast with myself uh, with the support of our PTG. I'm going to jump ahead past the introduction here and just play about a minute of this. It's also, to be perfectly honest, on a very, very, this, um, these repeated moments where two sons and lots of dogs that I am told are with her right now. They're in the room with me. Jessica, take it away. Thank you so much for having me here. So I um, I also want to add, since um, I guess that's an old bio, I have my new book is The Addiction Inoculation, Raising Healthy Kids in a Culture of Dependence, and it's on preventing substance uh, use in kids. Uh, I am an alcoholic, and so I'm raising two kids with the genetic predisposition for substance use, and so that's what I've been sort of going around talking about. But today we get to talk a little bit about what I found when I was spend, when I spent a couple of years researching The Gift of Failure, my first book, because as a middle school teacher myself, I was working in a middle school in New Hampshire, and I had this um, these repeated moments where, for those of you who are familiar with um, middle school and how middle school works and middle school children, middle school is the setup, right? Because we, we give kids more than they can handle, like lockers and schedules and textbooks and keeping their pants up and, and they're having, do they have a hood on? Do they have a hat on? And oh, look, there's the opposite sex or the same sex over there. And suddenly we're all hormones and there's so much to deal with. And the key thing to know about middle school is, like I said, it's a setup. We don't, they don't have the, um, the capacity, the connections in their brain yet to do all of it perfectly. So those of us who love middle school, um, I happen to think middle school is just the best possible place to work. I just, I love middle school so much. Our job is to walk around all day long, watch kids screw up all day long, and not necessarily confront every single thing as it happens, but find these incredible learning moments, like the moments when everyone's sort of calm and they're ready to hear us. And we have sort of thought about how we want to present it. And all too often what was happening at my middle school was, um, you know, if a kid has been forgetting his homework for like, I don't know, the past two weeks and you go up to the kid and you say, okay, sweetie, you've forgotten your homework for the past two weeks. So what are we going to do to make tomorrow different? from yesterday? How is tomorrow going to somehow be different? How are we going to learn from the mistakes, mistakes we've made over the past two weeks and change that for tomorrow? And okay, I'm going to pause that there. If you're interested in the entire podcast, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, it was listened um, by our current parents and guardians from Boston and Concord over 3,000 times. Um, and I heard from many of our parents and guardians who shared it out, because obviously that's much more than um, the parent and guardian count that we currently have. Um, and it's something easy to listen to on your commute into work, um, on a bike ride, on a walk, um, on the treadmill. Feel free to email me and I can send you the entire podcast. All right, we're gonna go from the parent portion that focuses on the adolescent brain and the middle school age, just back to a focus on Concord Middle School. I'm going to start with this slide that comes um, from a website that's pretty cool, actually. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this web website. It's called the Wayback Machine. You can literally Google the Wayback Machine. And this is an internet archive um, for any website that um, is really on the internet that you might be curious about what the website looked like in the year fill in the blank. Uh, so for example, I'm a huge Celtics fan. Um, and um, while I am absolutely thrilled in the current product that is in front of me, um, I can also think back to the yesteryears of the 2008 championship team. Um, and what I can do on the Wayback Machine is type in ESPN.com 
and go to ESPN.com on June 16th, 2008, when I think that was the exact date that the Celtics won their 17th championship. And I can actually see what ESPN.com, what their front page was. It's almost like looking back um, to different newspapers and what their front page looked like. This is our website um, in 2017. And if you look underneath the drop down academics, you have houses. Houses is sort of like teaming. And um, one of our panelists is going to be talking a little bit about teaming in just a few minutes. But I want to notice and point out the fact that we had one team per building five years ago, which split pretty much in half all of our grades. Um, and again, I want to highlight that there were just two teams per grade. The average class size um, on November 15, 2017, when this website was live, was around 2425. We now have three teams per grade. Of course, the entire sixth grade is at the Peabody building. The entire seventh and eighth grade course is at the Sanborn building. Our class size has been dropped down because we now have three teams per grade, not two, to about 19 to 20 per class. And our core teachers um, also have a reduction of their total case count or their total student count from about 110 down to about 80 to 85 as well. I'm going to turn it over to, I believe, Ms. Brand, if memory serves me, to some other changes that happened since the 2017-18 school year. Sure, thank you. Um, happy to go through some of these. So in a, um, as Mr. Cameron just shared a little bit, the reconfiguration of the two building model um, from two six, to eight, two six to eighth grade buildings to a sixth grade building and a seventh and eighth grade building. Um, so you know, we're really having one school, just a sixth grade campus or a sixth grade academy, and then a seventh and eighth grade building as well. Um, with, and with that said, that sixth grade academy model, um, which actually our high school has sort of adopted a similar um, approach to their freshman class um, because it has worked really so well uh, for our sixth graders. Um, again, three academic teams per grade. You'll notice the, um, the color schemes that we have, all sixth graders are divided into teams of uh, shades of green, and then seventh is red and eighth is blue. So what happens in sixth grade gets mirrored up to seventh and eighth grade. Um, in addition, unleveled math classes have been happening in sixth and seventh grade, um, bringing in a lot of um, differentiation, universal design, um, really great approach for kids as well. And, um, an RTI and an RTE block, um, response to intervention and response to enrichment. And I believe, um, Ms. Bradford, you might be expanding on that in just a moment as well. Okay, I think we're gonna go to Mr. Steffi about what teaming is at the middle school. Awesome, thanks. The idea with teaming is that we are in essence building a, a smaller cohort of kids, an academy, a team, um, within the grade level. So if you are on team forest, you will have a specific set of core area teachers. If you are on Lyme, you'd have a specific set of core area teachers in forest, a specific set of core area teachers. Um, and so that means that you may travel with your friends if you're on the same team um, and um, you may not because there are multiple sections per team, but each student on Kelly has the same group of teachers, which in and of itself creates a kind of bonding experience. Your home bases are also on team. Now I know what you're thinking and I have an answer. If you have a friend who's off team, you will see that friend throughout the day. You'll see them in specials, at lunch, at snack break, um, at the lockers in the morning, um, the home base that is off team, but happens to be the, the door, um, the, uh, the room next door. For those of you that have been in Peabody, um, you, you will notice that it is not a, a large school, even compared to your elementary school. So I, I can't emphasize enough that while you may be on a different team, you will continue to see your friends uh, throughout the day. 
And we talked about that at the Pancakes for the Panther program. Great. That our fifth graders are making a transition from a larger elementary school building um, and a total count of students to a smaller middle school building right. with, a, with, a, with less students as well. Of course. Cool. Right, we're going to turn it over to Ms. Bradford, who's going to talk a little bit about RTI, which is response to intervention and response, um, RTE, excuse me, response to enrichment, which is our, um, not so much our gifted and talented program, but classes that are available for the high achieving family and student. So as you hopefully caught in the video or have heard about it another time, all sixth graders start in a class called Fundamentals. Uh, Fundamentals happens th uh, four times a cycle, mostly during sixth period in the sixth grader schedule. So there is no RTI and RTE during the first trimester of the sixth grade year. That changes in seventh and eighth grade, but we'll get there in a little bit. So during the fall, um, teachers are, are doing what teachers do and, and figuring out if there are any students who need some extra help in things. We give a couple of assessments, the star reading assessment and the star math assessment, which students are familiar with from elementary school. We give a social emotional screener um, and, and teachers are meeting in teams to talk about students who may just need something a little bit extra. And then around the beginning of November, we send recommendations home for students who we think maybe could use some extra support in reading, some extra support in math, some extra social emotional support, extra support. And then um, students have access to those classes. Students who it doesn't seem like have an area of need at that moment in time, and this often changes trimester to trimester, um, will have access to other academic classes um, that are taught by the core area teachers in their content area. So one example of an enrichment class that's been very popular is called Cartographer's Guild. One of our social studies teachers is teaching a, a class that does more in-depth with mapping um, since geography is the focus of, of sixth grade social studies. Um, our English teachers often teach creative writing during enrichment block. Science, we have a science teacher working on a habitat design class where students are picking an animal they're particularly interested in and talking about rather than having animals in a zoo, what would be the ideal habitat they could design for that animal? Um, we have astronomy. Um, we have an art class. Um, I'm trying to think artists using different um, materials to create pieces of art, et cetera, et cetera. So all of our teachers are teaching either a response to enrichment class or response to intervention class. And it's really an opportunity for students to get what they need um, in that moment in time. So that starts in second trimester, um, late November or early December. And then again, in third trimester, we go through the same process. You know, I think the, the real leveraging point that uh, we have as a school in that response to intervention, response to enrichment, is that we're harnessing the license of the teacher who's leading that class, uh, which is very interesting because for families who are looking at a potential pathway to special education, um, before doing so, we want to make sure that there are classes offered to your child that are very small, you know, maybe six to eight students, that if your child is below grade level, we can offer up intervention to them taught under the license of the area that your child may be struggling or may need some support in. Um, and same thing can be said for our enrichment or above grade level opportunities. Um, so if your child thrives and is still curious um, and has a passion and a love for science um, or English, um, PE, art, music, uh, world language, they can actually choose to take a second class taught by probably their core teacher, the same teacher that they have um, in that class. Okay. Uh, we're coming up to just about the end. It is now 7.15. I just want to share a couple things about our new building. Um, then I'm going to ask the PTG rep who is on to um, raise her Zoom hand so we can promote her to share some information about our middle school PTG. And then we will have some um, a little bit of time to just accept some questions. Um, but before we do so, I just want to offer up um, some images, some very exciting images of our brand new Concord Middle School building. Um, we are doing a groundbreaking ceremony um, this coming fall, if you can believe it. Um, I believe right after our fall sports season, 
Um, and to the left here, this was actually just updated about an hour ago. Um, the architects and project management team that um, I'm engaged with uh, almost every other Thursday morning has shared with us an update that the project looks like um, is going to be, the building's gonna be re ready in February of 2025, uh, making this class of fifth grade um, historic in the sense that they will be the first class to graduate from the brand new Concord Middle School building that you see on your screen, which is very exciting, of course. Any fifth graders who are in the house who may have siblings who are in second, uh, third, or fourth, you can also see above um, on your computer screen when they will be arriving to this new building. Um, we're very excited. And for all of our Concord residents um, and our Boston residents as well, we thank you for the support um, and making this all possible. Okay, I believe that is it. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're gonna have um, an opportunity for our PTG to be promoted. And then following our PTG, just sharing a little bit about the middle school parent teacher group. Uh, we will have about probably 10 minutes or so to take any questions that you might have. Kimberlyn, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you all doing? Oh, we are also well, thank you. Great, it's so we're good gonna, to see everybody. Gonna turn it right over to you. Awesome. Now, the um, do I have the ability to share at this point? I believe you should. Um, do you want to try? Mm, it's saying host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. So no, I can I can skip the share if it's cumbersome. And nope. You're now try. Okay. Hey, look at that. Um, it is there. Now I just have to find the thing that I want to share. Mm. Which I had right in the front, of course. And now as soon as I'm looking for it, it's not there. So if I share my whole screen, then that's, is that what most people do? Yep. Okay, then what I'll do is bring to the front this. Can you see a picture of Kristen Martinez? We yes. can. Excellent, all right. And if you don't hear any sound, then please let me know right away. Hello, my name is Kristen Martinez and I am one of the co-presidents for the CMS PTG this year, welcome. Hi, I'm Deb Antonangeli, and I am a parent of a seventh grader at Sanborn. I am one of the co-presidents of the PTG. Hi, my name is Kimberlyn Drake, and I'm the vice president for the PTG. Hi, my name is Jenny Garofalo. I am the mom of a CMS eighth grader and secretary for the PTG. Hi, I'm Liz Nazzo, and I am treasurer of the CMS. Hi, I'm Susanna Benner, and I'm the parent of twins in sixth grade at Peabody, and I'm chairing the Teacher and Staff Appreciation Committee. Hi, I'm Carolyn Schweitzer, fundraising coordinator for the Concord Middle School PTG this year. Cool. So, let's see, now I have to stop the share. There. Hey, and now we're back to just us. What I wanted to do, everyone, was to give you a glimpse of who your PTG leadership was um, at the Concord Middle School. So, who, so that was our current year um, uh, board of directors for the Concord Middle School Parent Teacher Group, also known as the PTG. So you saw that I'm in there. I'm one of the parent volunteers that um, uh, that loves our school and wants to do as much as I can for it. Um, my name is Kimber Lynn Drake, as you heard in the video. So uh, Principal Cameron has agreed to have us uh, have a couple of minutes so that the PTG can tell you a little bit about what we offer your students and what we can do for you as a family of students. Um, and also to explain some ways that you might enjoy being involved with the PTG um, over these next few years. So. What do we do for you and what do we do for your student? There's, um, there's a few things, a handful, there's lots of things, but I'll just talk about a couple of them today. Um, first of all, what we'd love to do is offer resources for the students to enjoy while they're in school. 
And uh, that would include things like the playground equipment that you see outside the two buildings. And there's makerspace equipment in the libraries that the students can use while they're in the, in the, in the libraries. We also do things like helping to co-fund um, guest speakers that um, would entertain and inspire the students at assemblies, um, as well as participating in smaller projects that teachers might come forward with and offer them small grants um, for something that's really worth doing, worthwhile, but just isn't part of the regular school budget. So those are things we support that the students can enjoy in school. Now, uh, we also want to help to enrich the CMS experience for students and their families, which is the purpose of the PTG, um, with other, other things outside of school. And we like to put together social events for that. Now, I recognize that there are people on this call that might be new to the district, um, whether they're new to Concord or they've um, been in Concord for a long time and they're just sending their first kid to the middle school or whether they've joined the district in some other way, whether they joined from Boston. Um, so they, um, some people would be less familiar with how the typical PTG runs in Concord. And then there's kids that, uh, kids that are coming up from the three public elementary schools where you, you as a family member would have a lot of familiarity with what you'd see from a PTG. And in those for those folks, I just wanna tell you about some of the things that are different. Um, but so with social events, there'll be some that's the same and some that's different. But cool thing about the middle school, the kids are learning to be more autonomous, right? So when we put together a social event, you can have ones that are just the kids and there's no parents there. And there's teachers that are there and keeping it all safe and keeping it all okay. But it's a really cool change, you know? So we put together these um, student socials that are that can be sometimes at night Ooh, exciting and uh some and uh where we'll bring a whole grade into the building and they'll do a huge scavenger hunt that goes all around the whole building that you know we've done that a few years ago and then also principal cameron has come up with this fantastic format for socials where the kids will come and they'll do an outdoor thing where they they play cornhole they eat pizza and ice cream and they hang out with their friends they listen to music and they just chill and have a really wonderful, safe time with their friends. So there are things like that that the PTG will support for social things. We also support um, some social activities that are just for parents, a couple parents night out things, and some things that are for whole families, like bringing a performer of some sort into the auditorium that the whole family can enjoy one evening. So that's the social part of the kind of stuff that we like to do. Um, in addition to that, we love CMS teachers, administrators, and staff, and we want them to know that, that they're seen and appreciated. And so even though we all, all families individually would um, like to offer their expressions of, of appreciation, but as a PTG, we can pool our resources, just like you've seen in the middle, in the elementary schools, excuse me, we can pool our resources in, our, in order to offer some more organized uh, expressions of appreciation that can reach more of the more of the employees in the building than a family can reach individually. So we do those those things as well. Finally, of the things that we do, we also like to offer a special support for, for families that are that are new to the district and, and uh, for whom there are many things that will just be very, very mysterious. And, and also, well, new to CMS specifically. So for some of you, if you're sending your first kid to the to CMS, there's going to be some things that are kind of that are mysterious to you. And so I would like to offer you some support to help you understand what to expect in those situations. Here's my first timely tip of that sort. And you'll be over the course of the year, you'll be hearing from me about eh, once every month or six weeks with a timely tip. So this is your first one, the cafeteria. In elementary school, you have a fair amount of control over what your kid eats at school. So when they get to middle school, I just have to tell you the cafeteria, awesome, but they offer, in addition to regular lunch that you used to, they offer chips and they offer cookies and ice cream. And these are things that the kids can buy with their lunch account. Good to know, right? So as a parent, like whether you, whether you think that's good or bad or whatever, it's just good to know so that you can keep an eye on your My School Bucks account and you can just see. Or you can, be, you can take a more active role, but that's your choice. So my timely tip is I just want you to know that that is the case. So that's one. Over the course of the year, you'll be hearing from me some more. Now, some things that we don't do as a PTG, and this would be for folks that have kids coming up from the elementary school, you might be used to some things that we don't do. So don't, so that we don't want you to be surprised that that doesn't happen. We don't organize volunteers to work in the library. We don't organize volunteers to work in the art room because that stuff just doesn't happen. The kids are more autonomous and they don't need that much parent support um, like they did in the elementary schools. So, so that's the thing that's different. So that's what all we're doing for you guys. Now you might think, well, what can I do to help? 
what can I do to be involved? There's three things that we would love for you to do. And the first one is to please be informed. Once you are, um, once you're, once the roll-up has happened and your child is enrolled at the middle school, you'll start to automatically receive a weekly e a newsletter from the PTG. And, um, and if you would please take a moment to read those when you get them, that'll tell you all about all the things that's happening, that the things that we have planned for you. And the second thing is if you, um, would, if you would consider attending our monthly meetings, that would give you input to things that are going to, that the PTG will be doing in the future so that you can help guide our actions. That's the first thing. The second thing is to please consider being involved um, by volunteering at some point in either a small project or taking on a role that goes the whole year. Whether you have one hour available or lots of time the whole year, there's something that there's some way that you can be involved in a way that makes that meets your schedule. And we would love to have you join us. Um, and there's there will be links throughout the year and to sign up sheets and ways to participate in the newsletters that you'll get um, on a weekly basis. So that's number two. And the third thing we would love, if you can, is, and I hate to say it, be generous. The PTG can't do all of these things without some funding. And over the course of the year, we'll run different fundraising campaigns that we hope you'll participate in, in order to allow all these other lovely things that I've described to happen. And so that, and so that is my spiel about the PTG. And I'd really appreciate the time, Mr. Cameron, that you, that, um, to allow me to, to say hello to everybody. And we'll see, we'll see more of you guys in the fall. And we're, we will be available for you with questions and all that kind of stuff. So thank you again for the time. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, um, so right now we're gonna take any questions um, that any parent or if there are still fifth graders who are still in the house. Um, again, we had about an hour of questions that we took from our fifth graders um, about the life and times of a middle school student. Um, but we have about five minutes or so that we can take any questions. You can either type your questions in the chat or in the Q&A. While that's happening, Mr. Cameron, I just want to, there was one question that came through. I misspoke um, as the Sanborn person. I'm used to having multiple teams at lunch at a time. In sixth grade, each team has a lunch. Ms. Bradford, your snack break is all teams together. Right. Correct. Okay. So that's and mostly when our time in the morning between when buses arrive and when home bases is all together too, as long as we can be outside, which is most awesome. Of awesome. So I had said that lunches are together, but that's inaccurate. It's each team has their own lunch one after the other. Okay. Thank you. Here's one that came through the chat. Yep. I see right here. One of the slides said math would be unleveled. So math has been on level in sixth grade for, I think we're heading into our third year. Um, when, will, when will kids be taught at different levels? So that happens in the district in eighth grade. Um, unleveling math in sixth and seventh grade was a district um, decision um, that our fifth grade was involved in and our high school was involved in as well. Um, but the students go back to leveling um, around the age of 13 um, in that transition from seventh grade to eighth grade, um, as opposed to when the district used to do it around age 11 um, from that fifth grade to sixth grade transition. There's a question in the Q&A that is, what is the purpose of having a rotating and cascading schedule versus something more static? Answer that one, Mr. Bradford. Sure. You are the architect. Um, so it really allows students to have an opportunity to, to be at their best um, in, in each class at different times during the cycle. Um, some students are really better first thing in the morning. Some students are better later in the afternoon. Um, some students, unfortunately, get to school late um, more than we would hope. But if they had the same class first every single day, it would be time into that. Um, and it really just gives students an opportunity if they have math first period one day and second period the next day and third period the next day for students who may operate at a, a different place just based on their rhythms um, over, the, over the course of the day to hit each of those classes at their best moment. Um, what is the program description for health class? What will they be taught? Um, so, Part of the new, um, the rising fifth grade and new to Concord um, Google site, 
will be direct links to all of the curriculum um, and what is taught in every single class. So that's going to be a part of um, our Google site that is going to be open in just the next couple of weeks and available for all families throughout the summertime. There's a question here about do kids stay at school for clubs and for how long? The answer to that is yes. Um, we always get a, a flurry of questions at the start of the school year wondering <clears throat> if the kiddo is missing the announcements because clubs don't start right away. You'll get plenty of forewarning. There'll be an announcements and in home-based news about what clubs, what days they're run because it varies on the, the club sponsor's availability and for how long each afternoon. Is there a limit to how many students can register to one after school club? I can only think of one or two clubs where there's a limit for the most part. And, and those are because of a specific material, like for example, uh, robotics that they may be using, but most clubs do not have a limit. I think the question was also asking, can one student sign up for four clubs? Um, and the answer oh, is yes. yes. Yeah. Um, if possible, um, you know, the way our clubs will be introduced to our school community is here are the following clubs meeting on Monday, here are the following clubs meeting on Tuesday. Wednesday is a respite. Wednesday is an early release um, day for our uh, students. Um, it is when our adults engage in professional development opportunities um, and meetings. Um, but Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, our hallways are alive with student activity. Um, anywhere between 250 to 300 students are usually after school. Um, there's not a limit of um, how many students or there's not a limit of a student signing up for more than one club as long as there's no conflict. Uh, the clubs are going to be listed on the new Google site and on our website that you can find um, on Google as well. Is there a policy for personal cell, cell phone? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, that policy is it always needs to be away off. Um, it can be on the student's person, um, but I think all students, faculty, and staff know um, that I'm pretty manic when it comes to cell phones um, and making sure that students are not using it. For the most part, our student body is excellent in acquiescing to that. Um, it's very important that even in classes, the teachers don't offer a compromise to this policy. Um, even if a teacher shares with me, there may be educational value to a student um, using their cell phone in their class, that answer is still no. Um, we do find we want to uh, support our families who are trying to hold off on that cell phone choice. Um, are sixth graders eligible to participate in interscholastic sports or is it just limited to seventh and eighth graders? Um, so there are a few sports, only a few, um, that are eligible for sixth graders. That includes cross country in the fall, um, possibly field hockey in the fall. Um, I don't believe there are any winter sports that are available to our sixth graders. Um, and then sometimes track and softball are offered to sixth graders in the spring. Do so, we have sixth graders doing um, basketball in the winter? We do not. We didn't. Okay. Nope. And there are buses. There's a late bus at 340 and also a late bus at 430. It's really a very thorough bus home from extracurriculars situation. Yep. And our Boston late bus is at 430 as well. Um, so all of our Boston and, and Concord students have access to all of our after school activities. All right, we're going to take two more questions and then we're going to make a transition to the special education portion of the program. Um, Although, do you see any more questions? When does school start and end on a daily basis? So I purposely took that slide out um, because there are some internal conversations about supporting our transportation department and maybe shifting the time just a little bit. Um, right now, sixth grade starts Monday through Friday at 8.15. Um, students are asked to arrive by 8.10 at the latest and they're in home base um, at 8.15. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Right now, our sixth graders are dismissed at 2.30. Um, on Wednesdays, they are dismissed at 1.15. Last question, will there be a list of summer reading recommendations? Yes. 
So um, this will be on our Google site, but it will also be emailed out to all fifth grade families and our current sixth and seventh grade families, um, a summer supply list, um, what to buy during the summer months um, for your back to school shopping. And then also earlier than that will be an email sharing um, some reading that we are very much wanting our school community to engage in. Okay, I think we're gonna end it there. Um, I'm also gonna turn off the recording for this portion of our program. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Brand. But Ms. Brand, let's just uh, make a transition, uh, stopping this.